So welcome to week three, I guess technically, and this is our first uh, large project, I guess you could say. So what is it? It's to create an anthropomorphic character. What does that mean? Well, here's a definition. Basically what you're doing is you're taking something that's inanimate and giving it humanistic characteristics, okay? So the first thing we need to do is choose an inanimate object. So here I've decided to choose broccoli just because uh, I felt like it. Um, and I've just gone on Google image. I've looked through the images and I found an image that I like. I've clicked on the image so it's nice and big. Make sure it's the large as you can. And if you right click it, you can save as uh, JPEG, whatever the case may be, onto your desktop and um, use that as reference. I think it's vital that we have reference in creating our images. Just like you see here, I have the reference printed out. You can use an iPad if you want, if you have that. But I have it right next to me while I draw. Why? Because there are things that, I, you know, I know what broccoli looks like, but there are things that even I, over the course of my life, seeing it a thousand times, I just don't realize that they're there until I look for them, okay? So I've started my drawing here. I'm a little bit, maybe like a, a quarter of the way through. And uh, you can see, the very light structural lines behind everything. And I'm blocking out um, my broccoli. Now, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to basically uh, cartoonize or abstract that broccoli for you guys so you can see what a cartoon version of the broccoli might look like. Now, you do not have to do this. I'm doing this basically to give you guys an idea of how to take something that is complex and real looking that we see every day like broccoli and make it look fun energetic childish some people might say um, but more like a cartoon okay so what i've done is i've used the structural lines and it looks very similar to the photo however what i've done is is i've softened the lines i've curved the lines i've exaggerated the shape of some things and i've oversimplified a lot of it so if you look at the top the whole florette of the broccoli right i'm not drawing in every circle of that i've drawn in a couple and i've quickly scribbled in some of the areas that i know i'm going to make dark i've picked my light source you can see it in the top there my arrow it's coming from the top left. And now that I have my light source, I know that the lines on the right hand side or the lines underneath the florets are going to be darker because they're further from the light. And the lines up top are going to be lighter because they're closer to the light. Now, this is something that I discussed in the inking video. If you want to go into this further, you can. Uh, otherwise, you should know what I'm talking about. Um, anything that is going to be solid black, you can quickly mark off with X's instead of sitting there shading it in because you don't need to waste that time if you're just going to be filling it in with a Sharpie. Okay, make notes if you want to write it in, like say solid black, that's fine. Whatever's easier for you, whatever saves time. So once I have the whole thing drawn out and I have an idea of where everything is, I'm going forward with my darkest, my thickest brush or my Sharpie first. And I want to vary my lines so that it's not just like random thick lines throughout or random thin lines throughout. Everything must have a purpose, okay? So if you see everything, as I mentioned before, that is further away from the light is getting the thicker pen. And as we go forward with this, you'll notice that I'm very specific into the areas, especially in the top and the florets, of where I put this dark line. Okay, and then the areas that are solid black, I obviously fill in, and then I'm going to go back in as we move further along the video with my thin lines. So now you have two options. Uh, I want to let the rest of the video play, so if you are interested in the process and how the rest of this gets inked, you can do so. Uh, otherwise, if you're like, I know this, I don't need to know the rest of this, you can skip ahead to the six minute mark around there. I'm going to start talking again about some other inking things that you need to know. And then uh, I'll probably skip ahead again uh, and move forward. So if you want to just skim through this and move forward quickly, you can do so. If you want to skip the inking altogether and just go straight to creating the character and the uh, anthropomorphic part, uh, go to around uh, 10 minutes, 15 seconds in. You should be about there.
Okay, so now we're further along. Uh, I just want to point out that I started putting in some larger areas of blacks and I've almost done like this scribbly kind of technique, I guess you can call it, in areas of the florets to show that the light is moving around and that they are sticking up in puffs. And because of this, it's creating these pockets of shadows that are curved, okay, uh, around each like individual floret that's almost sticking up, okay? Uh, I've also put in these large uh, streaks of black down the, the stalk of the block uh, of the broccoli and uh, that just also is like a core shadow that if you if you're familiar with what that means you know what that means and if you're not watch the inking video to explain what it means but basically it's the core shadow for the broccoli and it shows another way that shows that the light is coming from the left hand side and moving across i'm now going in with a thin marker and putting in uh scribbles again simplifying that's the whole point of a cartoon to simplify something that is overly complex Okay, uh, and we are, I'm going basically going in here, making circles, scribbles, things like that, that emulate the texture and the feeling of the broccoli. That's what you want to do. And again, I'm not drawing every single one. I'm drawing quite a few, but I'm not drawing every single one. And I'm going to continue to do this uh, as I move forward. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do some cross hatching. Okay, so now I'm putting in some more details. I'm looking for little imperfections, little rises in the stalk and stuff like that. And I'm putting in my cross hatching. So if you see here, the lights coming from the left, remember, I'm putting in lines that are close together that are on the right hand side of that core shadow to show that the light is moving from the left to the right, okay? And by putting them here, it almost gives the illusion of like a quote unquote gray, right? It's a middle tone between black and white. And by doing so, it just helps emphasize the light, but it also helps create the form and the shape of the broccoli. By changing the direction of the line that I'm putting in here, okay? By putting the stalk in the center horizontal, I'm emphasizing the horizontal nature of it. By putting the one on the bottom on an angle, it almost gives the viewer uh, subconsciously the the idea that the bottom is going underneath because the lines are on a diagonal so make sure that your lines when you do cross hatch it's as if you're cross hatching on top of a sculpture you want to go in the direction of whatever it is if it's a sphere they should be curved if it's a box they should be flat okay if it's a diamond it should be multiple different angles okay and i'm changing them depending on each plane that i'm drawing on just to show that there is three-dimensional space and you see i'm curving them a little bit there and i'm also the one in the center is horizontal and the ones on the left are a little bit more diagonal to separate them and to give the viewer the reminder that one is going in one direction and then the other plane uh and the other the plane when i say plane i mean the area in which i'm drawing on um is going in the other direction okay one last thing before I get to the eraser too is I've added stippling, the dots, to give even more of a texture to the florets. So last things last, once it's dry, you go over with your eraser, you erase all your pencil, and you're left with this perfectly black ink, okay? And you can scan this, photograph this, or just go out, right out and color it on the paper, um, whatever you need to be. Um, this project is in color, so I would recommend coloring it before you obviously photograph it. Uh, you could also color it first and then ink on top, which will keep your inks dark. All right, so now to the project. Um, we are now taking that object that we've chosen, whether it's broccoli or anything else, um, and I've given some other examples of what other companies have done for anthropomorphic characters uh, in the folder. So please make sure you read, watch the other videos, and check the handout with the assignment and everything out uh, before starting your project. Um, all right. So now I'm basically doing the exact same thing that I just did for you at the cartoon, but I'm going to give this broccoli 
human characteristic. So now it's important to remember the stuff from the first project as far as the proportions of the human body go, because you're going to kind of rely on that a little bit uh, for your character here. You want to make sure that the, you know, the arm, the forearm and the bicep are pretty similar in size. You want to make sure that the feet uh, have an arc in the center, things like that, uh, so that they look fairly human. Okay. So, I'm starting off the exact same way I started the broccoli for the cartoon version, quote unquote, and that is with structural lines. So I'm basically drawing geometric shapes, squares, rectangles, cylinders, and spheres to lay out the basic shape of the broccoli, okay? Um, now, I'm going to be honest, I would like you to do a couple of sketches first uh, and upload them so that we can take a look and give feedback uh, on your different ideas. So maybe you have like six different ideas for the broccoli, maybe one, uh, you know, or let's say you're doing a candlestick similar to Beauty and the Beast, like in the folder, and you want to do different options where he has different careers or he's doing different tasks or whatever the case may be. That's fine. I'd rather you do that. Here, I'm kind of brainstorming on the fly while making this video, and I, I was literally uh, talking to my friend while, while creating this and I was like how, how do I make this kind of interesting and and punny right so uh, usually steam broccoli so I figured why not have the broccoli just getting out of like a sauna or a steam bath and feeling fairly refreshed you know with the cucumbers on the eyes the towel the whole nine yards right so as I'm doing this I'm trying to figure out the pose where the eyes are the teeth are the mouth are all those things so I'm noticing, and if you notice in the center, I have this triangle, that's going to be the mouth. And the reason I put the mouth there is because of the way that the arms of the broccoli that reach up to the florets came together to create that like upside down triangle. And it just looked like a natural cartooned mouth. So I went with it. You have to look for like natural things in whatever the item is that you're creating into human form you want to look for things like a car a lot of people say a car looks like it has a face because the bumper the grill and the headlights kind of make up a similar humanistic kind of character right uh, where the headlights are the eyes the bumper might be like the mustache or the mouth uh, and the grill is like the nose or something like that um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind look for things that actually do look human or face like in the object uh, that you are anthropomorphizing, if that's a word. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what to do with his arms here. I have his arm down, I have his other arm on his hip, I have the squares there for the triangle, I have the line to show that his back's going to be arched a little bit, I have the lines for his eyebrows, I have his eyes there, and I have a couple of different um, poses that I'm going to wind up going through now, trying to figure out what works best compositionally, what's funnier, right? So this is why I suggest you have multiple sketches so that you can figure this out and it doesn't frankly look like a mess like this is about to look like. Um, and I changed the eyes multiple times. I had him lifting up the cucumber off one eye at one point. Um, and you can see it there. You see how the cucumber is like, oh, the circle is over the other eye. That's the cucumber. So at this point, I'm like, all right, I kind of have an idea of what I want. One arm on the hip holding a cucumber, the other one on his side. And once I have that structural line laid out, I start again looking at my reference photo, looking for different things that look humanistic and trying to emulate the feeling of broccoli in this character. So I, I originally was like, oh, I'll give him skinny arms, but I'm like, he's got this really thick trunk, right? So he's not going to have that skinny of arms. He's going to have kind of these like brutish arms that are thicker, more so than I originally intended, right? So I did wind up thickening him up there a little bit. And you'll see the other arm that I draw at first is a little skinny and then I wind up thickening it up. And uh, I have my eraser on hand so I can quickly erase. And I'm trying to figure out like where the towel meets, like where his belly is, things like that. These are all things you should be thinking about. I mean, you have a week to do this. So I, in my opinion, that's more than enough time to be thinking about these little nuances uh, of your character. Okay. Um, so I'm also, if, if you're unfamiliar too, of like how a towel falls or wrinkles or things like that, um, I would also look at photo reference for towels and for cloth, you know, things like that. And any photo reference you can get your hands on, the better, because the more reference you have, the more realistic and believable this absolutely abstract cartoon will look. 
okay I'm also figuring out where the light is so if you notice I'm starting to put lines in so where my cross hatching is going to wind up I know the light is going to be coming from the left again okay and I'm just slowly now going in with a darker pencil over the structural lines that I drew in lightly okay um, at this point I realized I think it would be entertaining if he had a florette as a mustache uh, I also mark in the mouth, I bend it up a little bit so it looks a little bit more uh, human-like with a jaw. I shade in the back of the mouth so it looks like it's receding into space, okay? Leaving an area for the tongue, okay? Now, I don't believe I gave him teeth because I, I don't know, I just thought broccoli wouldn't need teeth. I mean, it's really whatever you want to do, right? It's your creation, so um, whatever you feel is your reasoning behind why a character looks the way they are, great. And if you have a reason for everything, even better, okay? Uh, again, laying out my cross hatching, trying to figure out where the light is going the entire time. And I'm just going to move forward with this. Again, I'll let the video play so you can see the process. Uh, and I just move forward with this, doing a very similar process that I did earlier with the broccoli, simplifying the florets, simplifying the details that are complicated and then slowly working in the human characteristics. So I just want to make a point here uh, to point out the whole purpose of this project. So the purpose of this project is to get you to look at everyday objects such as broccoli or a candlestick or a teapot or something like that differently and abstractly okay so the whole point of cartoons is that they are funny abstract versions of things that are relatable and recognizable to us as people okay and what makes them funny is usually that they have some sort of a pun associated with them similar to the broccoli here um or that they're relatable okay people like things that are relatable and like oh that's adorable because it's ironic okay or it's adorable because the eyes are overemphasized and the action that they're doing is just adorable regardless you want to look for humanistic characters in the object that you are creating and you want to emphasize them you want to bring them out okay the broccoli the florette on the top it looks like hair you want to use it as hair right and then you add the arms and the legs and everything else afterwards. And you've seen this a million times in many different cartoons. Uh, Beauty and the Beast is, is one of the prime examples that I'll, I give as well. Uh, Alice in Wonderland has it. Uh, the Brave Little Toaster, if you guys remember that movie. Um, there's a lot of cartoons, especially for kids, that utilize this technique. Okay, And it's not that uncommon, but what makes it successful, what makes it successful is that you are taking humanistic qualities that already exist in the car, like the grill and the headlights and stuff like that, or the teapot where the actual spout looks like the nose, you're taking these qualities and emphasizing them by exaggerating them in your drawing and your cartoon. And by making them humanistic, and using things that are relatable that look human, people will then see that, relate to it, and be like, oh, that's adorable. Why? Because they themselves most likely thought of that same exact scenario where that teapot came alive and talked to them because we're surrounded by these creative, imaginative uh, environments where these things come alive, especially ever since Disney and a lot of the earlier cartoons started putting these ideas in our heads. All right, so keep that in mind when creating your character. I think that's the most important part of this project is really the creative thought in applying the humanistic characteristics in a way that are relatable on your object.
Alright, so um, I've basically laid out the whole thing. I don't spend too much time drawing in a lot of the details in the florets uh, prior to inking, basically just to save time uh, for the video. Um, and uh, I'm moving forward with the inking and I'll wind up inking in a lot more of the detail of the florets and just with the pen, uh, just to save time. Um, but here again, uh, exactly the way we did the other broccoli, cartoonizing it or abstracting it, I should say. Um, I'm going forward with my thicker pen first on the side that is furthest from the light to emphasize the value and the direction that the light is coming from. Uh, and as I, I go forward too, if you notice too, I made his very bushy eyebrows covering his eyes. So I have to make sure that I put a darker shadow, as you can see, underneath those florets. So it looks like that those florets are sticking out like eyebrows. And I also put it underneath the mustache, so it emphasizes the mustache and everything else. Now, at the end of this, it's just going to kind of look like a giant florette. But what I can do in the as I move forward with this, with the color, and you'll see it in your example, uh, on the sheet uh, is that I can emphasize or change the values of the greens in the florets up top to make the mustache and the eyebrows stand out more compared to the rest of the floret and his, uh, I guess his quote unquote hair. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, I'll let the video play. I'll let it move forward with the inking and then the uh, final product. I'll have the image uh, up uh, on the sheet with all the uh, information and anything else that you will need to know to finish this product uh, project and to upload it.